Hello, this is Holly Tanner with the Herman and Wallace Pelvic Rehab Institute, and I'm here with Erica Vitek, who is going to tell us about the course that she has created for Herman and Wallace. Erica, will you tell us a little bit about your background? Yes, absolutely. Hi, Holly. Thanks for chatting with me today about my course. So my course is Parkinson disease and pelvic rehabilitation. And it's, I'm just so excited to be part of the team and to be sharing all this great information. Kind of how I even got the idea for the course was there seemed to be a need for more neuro type topics related to pelvic health and individuals were reaching out to me with my specialty in both Parkinson disease rehabilitation as well as pelvic health. And I always talked about the connections and uh, wanting to bring that information to more people. And so I wanted to compile all that information, but really how I even got started in specializing in Parkinson's was back in early 2000s, I was hired at a hospital as an occupational therapist working with people with Parkinson's disease. But when I was in college, my real interest was pelvic health. And so I kind of got thrown into learning a whole lot about Parkinson's disease at that time. And I got really interested in how it all related to what I really wanted to do was pelvic health. So I was able to kind of connect that all really right from the beginning of my career, even though I started more on the physical rehabilitation side of Parkinson disease, which I continue to this day, uh, but then able to combine those two passions of mine. I also am an instructor with LSVT Global, and so we do LSVT big course training and certification workshops, and so I work with them a lot, and so I have still the physical rehab background, as well as my connection to the pelvic health background, and uh, again, bring that all together in my course. So we've got two packed full days of information uh, virtually, and I think really it does translate well to the virtual environment. When we started off, we were in person and now I uh, have transitioned it to this virtual course. So I think it, it really does transition well. And I just made some updates to the uh, outline and kind of how things are laid out to add in the case study and more talk about uh, some practical treatments as well. Wonderful. So um, I'm imagining what is in this course and also that that would match a conversation you would have with someone when they ask you, well, what are the connections between neuro and pelvic health? What are some of the big cornerstone pieces that you get to dive into in more detail in this class? Yeah, absolutely. So in the beginning of the course, the first day is really going back to kind of the basics of neuro in general, kind of get our neuro brains on and kind of thinking about general neuro type terminology and topics related to neurotransmitters, the autonomic nervous system. And so individuals with Parkinson specifically, when we're thinking about neuro and pelvic health, their motor system is affected by Parkinson disease. So movement, but also their non-motor systems of autonomic function, their limbic system, and all the different motor functions that also affect the pelvic floor in addition to all the other muscles in the body. And so we have all of these interplay of things going on that affect the bladder, bowel, and sexual health systems in individuals with Parkinson's. That's a little bit different than your general population of individuals that are coming to you that do not have neurologic dysfunctions. And so there are a multitude of bladder issues that are very specific to people with Parkinson's disease. For example, like overactive bladder and what happens neurologically from the brain down through the system that is different in someone with Parkinson's disease than would be in your general population. So that's just like one example of the depths we go into right in the beginning, day one, getting into that neuroanatomy, neurophysiology of why that's actually happening, which then helps us go into day two, where we talk about the practicality of what do you do in the clinic about the things that are happening neurologically, which then uh, are causing all these bladder and then bowel and sexual health issues. And how do you help folks tease out some of the challenges of the necessary medications? You know, when pharmacology comes into play and you have some of these neurological challenges, um, what kind of tools you're going to talk through uh, in terms of giving to folks for helping understand and, and implement a treatment program? 
Yeah, that's a really great question, Holly. People with Parkinson's disease are on very complex medication regimens, actually, just in and of themselves. And many of them, not all people with Parkinson's, but many of them are elderly. And so the medication complexity really is much more challenging in this population. And so at the end of day one, the last lecture, we go through the pharmacology very specifically for people with Parkinson's in order to have a really nice base understanding of how that is interplaying with the pelvic health conditions in addition to helping them with their motor symptoms of the disease. And so individuals that take the course, some uh, just, you know, in my past experience so far teaching it, some people have a lot of knowledge in Parkinson's and only some uh, knowledge in pelvic health and mm -hmm. others have a lot of knowledge in pelvic health and only a little bit in Parkinson's. So there is some aspect where we do have to get on the same page together uh, as a group when I'm teaching it. And so uh, specifically what you're asking me here about the pharmacology is, is really day one where we're going to dig into all that and try to iron out kind of that baseline, getting that information from your patient off the bat and kind of talking about what you want to be looking for when you start off with that patient and then finding out what kind of bladder and bowel medications maybe they have taken thus far and how that all can potentially interplay with their Parkinson's as well uh, because individuals with Parkinson's also have potentially worse side effects from some of those medications that we use for bladder issues specifically than do uh, other individuals and so we dig into what to look for for that. Uh, we talk a lot about some practical uh, behavioral kind of modifications using bladder and bowel diaries and things like that to try to weed out some things in addition to uh, using our other skills as public mm -hmm. health professionals. I remember when you were turning in course files and I was looking through all the details on the neurologic system and really feeling quite overwhelmed again in, in the sense of you know, from the last time that I would have taken some really intensive neurological coursework. How can folks prepare themselves well to come into your class? Is there, are there uh, required readings? Are there things that you think would be helpful for, for people catching up a little on the pelvic health side or the neuro side? You know, actually, I feel like and I, I hope that I, I did a really good job at the basic review right in the beginning so we can kind of talk through it together. Uh, I'm one that tends to take a course and not want to spend a ton of extra time on the pre recordings per se, because sometimes that's overwhelming with busy lifestyles and us as therapists. And I work full time in the clinic as well as much of the participants do. And so I, I kind of felt like when I put together this course, I really wanted to have us focus together as a group as we start the class to really dig into those basics right in the beginning uh, and not have a lot of required things to do prior due to the dedication of time and um, being respectful of everyone's time to like learn together. So that's kind of my, just coming from my perspective, how I wanted to approach the class. And so what I did in the beginning of the course, and I really have gotten some great feedback about this, is I, I made a lot of tables, a lot of charts we can reference. We don't have to memorize it. Mm -hmm. We can look at those tables. We can reference them. I have a lot of drawings where we can uh, uh, look at a chart and the drawing right next to it uh, in the manual. I've spent a lot of time just putting it all down in words, what I'm saying. So there's not a lot of need to take a lot of notes, but we can study the pictures and the uh, drawings together. So I really have gotten a lot of great feedback on that. And I think that's helped as we move through the course and get in the details about Parkinson's and pelvic health. From oh, that's wonderful. What is it about working with this, you know, challenging uh, kind of grouping uh, of things that come up with neuro and pelvic health conditions? What is it for you that keeps you so passionate about not just working with these folks, but also continuing to learn and share your knowledge? Yeah, it's, it is so just, heartwarming and it feels so good to help these individuals because the, the motor symptoms of Parkinson's are really the ones mostly recognized by physicians or mm -hmm. more outwardly noticed even by other individuals. But these private conditions of pelvic you know, health that we, we are helping with are things that they might not even mention to their physician. Maybe we find out when we're doing other physical rehab or, or our colleagues refer them to us because they know what we do. 
And to help them with something of this magnitude that affects their everyday life, when they have trouble even walking or moving or transferring or their caregiver burden is so high because their their loved one now turned caregiver uh, is helping them do everything. I mean, we can make such an impact on these individuals and and we do on other people too, right? But when you have a neurologic progressive neurologic condition and uh, and we can have some even slight effect or maybe more than slight, right? And in, in helping them kind of shape some techniques they can use to improve their day to day. It is, it's just so great to be able to help them. And, and sometimes individuals that we work with that have Parkinson's uh, have cognitive impairment, they have difficulties learning, uh, that can be then help for the care partner that's involved in their care as well. And it can be a significant uh, reduction in their burden. And I do talk a lot in the course about uh, cognitive impairment, I give a lot of tips about how we can train and some ideas. Uh, people with Parkinson's muscles and their, their minds are a little different. And so there are some great tips that I hope that I can provide and lots of clinical experience. I've been an occupational therapist for 20 years. And so I have a ton of clinical experience with this population. It's been the population I've worked with my entire career, basically. So I hope that I can provide that passion that I have for helping these individuals as well to uh, the individuals that take my class. Wonderful. And I'm sure you'd agree that we need more folks knowledgeable about Parkinson's and combining that with pelvic health knowledge as well. Yes, there's over a million people in the United States alone that have Parkinson's mm -hmm. disease. It's the second most common neurodegenerative disorder uh, be just behind Alzheimer's disease. And so there are so many individuals dealing with this. And I think we really can really expand our practices even. I, you know, I, I don't think a lot of individuals that work in pelvic health market themselves to neurologists. And so I think there, there's an opening there for additional referrals and more people that we can help. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts about this course. And I know people are really excited to have this online available. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Holly. Erica.